today's lesson is about a new fun topic in physics. It's about torque. So think about this. You are going into the classroom and you are trying to open the door. Now imagine that you're opening it normally at the handle and think about the force that you're going to be applying. Right? Now imagine a different picture. There are some doors that have handles like in the middle of the door instead of to the side. And imagine you're opening the door using that handle. Or worse yet, you're trying to push the door right by the hinge. How much force will you need to apply? That's right. A lot. That's right. That's right. A lot. A lot of force. So that is the notion of a torque for you to visualize it. Now, the torque is, um, well, we'll talk about that, uh, what it is. So think about a couple of notations here first. If you are, so this is our door, uh, the view is from the top, so that's the handle, that's the hinge, yeah? So we can apply the force at the handle over here, or maybe somewhere closer to the hinge. If you are applying the force to the door, like so, perpendicular to the door, then the center of rotation is going to be at the hinge, so that's the axis of rotation. And then we would say that uh, this distance r, B, because that's the force B, or RA, force A, those are called lever arms. So that's the name for the distance, okay, from the, uh, from the axis to the point where we applied the force. So those are different lever arms. So the angular acceleration is going to be proportional to the force, and it's also going to be proportional to the distance, the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular, when I say perpendicular, means perpendicular to the force. So this, uh, our lever arm, or sometimes it's called momentum arm, moment arm. Which means that if I have RA, which is 3RB, right, so this distance is three times as long as this one, that means that our force FB has to be three times as large as this force FA. That's why we feel that if you push the door at the edge, we need to push it lightly, but if you push it by the uh, hinge closer to the axis of rotation, you have to apply a lot of force there. Um, so that means that the angular acceleration is proportional to the product of the force. Let me write it down. Angular acceleration alpha is proportional to the product of the force um, times the lever arm. And that product is called the moment of the force, and it is uh, denoted by a Greek letter tau. T-A-U, tau, Greek letter tau. Looks like a T. So alpha is proportional to tau. Um, angular acceleration is proportional to the torque. So tau is the torque. Uh, it's proportional the so this uh, proportional to the force times the lever arm. So force times the lever arm. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm writing down proportional because it's not they're not equal. So we'll try to figure it out. Now we have to make sure that the distance r is perpendicular to the force. And obviously, I can apply the force. Well, most likely, I will apply it perpendicular to the door. But for some reason, I might apply it in a slightly different way. I might apply the doors perpendicular to the door handle at some angle or maybe even like parallel to the door. So in this case, this is what's going to happen. So this one, well, we kind of talked about it. We know what's going to happen. If you apply force, this force FD, then you know that you're pushing towards the hinge. What do you think is going to happen? That's right, nothing is going to happen. The door is not going to be opening or closing. However, if your force FD is a little bit at an angle, so now it's like this force FC, then your door is going to be rotating, opening or closing. And uh, this is what we mean when we say that the distance should be, or the lever arm should be perpendicular to the force. So imagine that we have this force uh, FC, and then we are continuing this line of action, right? So line is infinite. We're continuing it. And then we're drawing the perpendicular from the axis of rotation, from the center of our imaginary circle to this line. So this one is now RC. So this one is now the length of the arm, uh, lever arm RC. 
and we can see that uh, it should be, uh, well, it will be smaller than RA because we have our right triangle, right? RA is the hypotenuse and the right triangle, the leg is always shorter than the hypotenuse. All right. So that means that the magnitude of the torque that's associated with our uh, force FC has to be equal R sub C times F C, that's the magnitude, so no um, vector notation here. Overall, what we can say is that our torque tau has to be equal R, so this perpendicular, so I'm going to say it's R perpendicular, times um, F. I'm going to call this equation number 10. All right, so if you look at this diagram, so this is our R perpendicular, right? So that's that's what we have. This is our axis of rotation. It's kind of like sticking out towards us. And uh, this is our point of application of force. So basically this diagram, this part A is very, basically the same thing as here, right? So R perpendicular times the force. All right. We can also see that it's going to be the same thing. I can write it down as R times F perpendicular. So now look at this diagram. So this is R. This was the force. And then it is split into two components, perpendicular and parallel components. So I'm basically doing R perpendicular times uh, R times F perpendicular. Why is it the same? Well, because look at this angle theta, this angle theta. Because over here, I would say that tau is equal R F sine theta, right? Because F is F, F perpendicular is F times sine theta. And R perpendicular over here is R times sine theta. So I can get tau, which is R F sine theta. Look at this. Those two guys are exactly the same. Okay. So that's my equation. I can say this or I can say this. And in any case, I'm going to get this equation. So those are my equations 10a, 10b, and 10c. Okay. So now let's apply this knowledge to an example uh, about the bicep. So we are going to be working out. Okay, we're not going to be we're working out our brain muscle, not the not the, the bicep muscle. But the problem is about bicep muscle. The biceps muscle exerts vertical force on the lower arm, uh, bent as shown in this figure. So bent at 90 degrees and bent at whatever 90 plus 30, 120 degrees, uh, as shown here. For each case, we need to calculate the torque about the axis of rotation through the elbow joint. So the axis goes through the elbow over here, but then it looks uh, goes towards us, right? Or perpendicular to the screen. Assuming the muscle is attached five centimeters away from the elbow. So the muscle is attached five centimeters. So this distance is five, right? This distance is five, but now the arm is um, is not at 90 degrees. So in the first case, case A, we have F equals 700 Newtons and R perpendicular is going to be uh, 5 centimeters, so 0 0.05 meters. So all we have to do to calculate tau is we just multiply 0 0.05 meters times 700 Newtons, which is going to give us 35 meters times Newton. Now, please be very careful with the notation here, because meters times Newton, it is not the same as Newton times meters. We know that Newton meters, that is joules, and that is the units for the energy, right? So that is for the energy. And this one is for the torque. Those are two different concepts. So even though it looks like, oh yeah, it's the same units, uh, multiplication has commutative properties, so I'm just going to switch them. No, in this case, we do not switch. It's very important that we put meters first and then newtons after. Okay, so this one is not going to work for us because we will be talking about energy now. All right, now for part B. 
in part B, the elbow is at 30 degrees here, 60 degrees from the vertical line. So that means that the R perpendicular over here is going to be equal point. So we have to use our uh, sign formula. So we will have our 0 0.05 meters times the sine of this angle 60 degrees, right? So we're trying to figure out this distance. So uh, this distance over here is five. The muscle is attached five uh, centimeters away. And then we're trying to figure out this uh, perpendicular distance to the um, to the force. OK, so this distance is no longer five. This distance is now five from here to here. Mm -hmm. So once you multiply those, we are going to get tau equals 0 0.05 meters times sine 60 degrees, which is square root of 3 over 2. And we are still multiplying by 700 newtons. We are going to get 30 meters times newton. As we can see, the arm now exerts the torque less than the arm uh, in a bent, 90 degrees bent position. And usually when we have, when you work out in a gym, weight machines uh, designed to take this variation with the angle into account. Another thing, final thing that we should mention is that sometimes you have not one but two torques, couple of forces acting on the object. So you will have two torques. So in this case, you will have total torque is going to be the sum of the torques. So I'm going to write it down here. Total equals the sum of the torques. Um, or we will have to subtract the torque. We remember that the positive position is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. And the negative is clockwise. Everything is connected now. So everything like what we're doing in trigonometry and math, same thing, uh, right? So if you have some forces acting in a clock, counterclockwise uh, position, uh, direction and then some forces acting in a clockwise, then you will have to be subtracting them. If all the forces acting in a counterclockwise, then you will be adding them. So that's it about the torque. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next video.